with the looming May 27 deadline, political opposition parties refused to act with the much-needed alacrity to pass the amendments to the Anti-Money Laundering and Countering the Financing of Terrorism Act. On May 8, when the bill should have been debated in the Parliament, the opposition insisted that it be sent to a select committee. As a result of this, the country now stands at a dangerous precipice with the possibility of being labelled a pariah state in the international community. You know what is the image of being a non-compliant member of the international community? And we are non-compliant because the opposition conspired among themselves to block legislation. Even if we were able to get voluntary compliance by those to whom the legislation would have been directed, we still would have been non-compliant. And we would have ended up like some other pariah states in whose companies we don't belong. In whose companies we don't belong. Because we failed to enact. And subsequent to the enactment, we failed to enforce. This event ought to have been concluded to the nation's satisfaction, to the satisfaction of our treaty partners, it ought to have been gone. It has now been hijacked, and political misadventure is afoot. The AFC indicated that it will not support the bill until the president reconsiders his decision to withhold assent to the Fiscal Management and Accountability Amendment Bill of 2012 and the former president's Benefits and Other Facilities Bill of 2012. We feel that capping of the benefits ought to have been regarded as constitutional, especially in accordance with not having unlimited resources in our economy. Additionally, that Fiscal Management and Accountability Amendment Act has tremendous benefits for accountability in our democracy, and it ought to also have been assented to within the 21 days deadline. Um, it, has, it was not. And we now come with the government pleading with us that we must pass because we're going to go into some blacklist, this anti-money laundering amendment that they have now um, put in the parliament. The Alliance for Change is going to make it quite clear that we will only give our support if there is a reconsideration of the assent to those two bills and the establishment and the operationalization within some deadline of the Public Procurement Commission. The government is of the view that the opposition's move, particularly the AFC, to link President Donald Ramatar's non-assent of their two bills, which are constitutionally flawed, to the country's future in terms of continued good standing in the international community is reprehensible. The president's non-assent to the two bills is a matter that has been from the time the bills were tabled in Parliament, from the time of the discussion, the debate on the bills, the President, the non was already publicized and made known. To link that to the future of Guyana and our ability to entertain and to continue to entertain the good standing in the international community that is conferred by our compliance with our obligations under this FATF and other conventions is indeed a most reprehensible step by the political opposition. This behavior of the opposition in trying to bargain in the press and not at the table really 
is an indication again that they're not really interested in negotiating or bargaining or anything like that. This is grandstanding. This is uh, showing a behavior that's showing, uh, you know, bullyism as we've used that word before. But any party that uh, worth its salt that wants to genuinely move forward in any issue, normally it's done between parties. Let's meet, let's talk, etc. The AFC has traditionally bargained with the PPP and the PP in gov PPC in government by these public declarations. And so the genuineness of them or the sincerity of them are, are highly questioned. Are they serious and, and uh, genuine in wanting to go in this way? Because what it is is they're holding a, a stick over the government's head and say, if you don't do this, this is what's going to happen. Both opposition bills have been returned to the parliament by the president with a detailed outline of how these proposed pieces of legislation are in conflict with the constitution as well as existing laws. The amendments contained in the anti-money laundering bill emanated out of the deliberations of the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force, a body that is responsible for monitoring the operations of legislation of this type throughout the Caribbean. This bill and the recommendations which are contained herein arise out of a task force, sir, the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force. This is a body which is responsible for monitoring the operation of legislation of this type and nature throughout the CARICOM Caribbean area. And this body has examined legislation in the number of countries which they have jurisdiction over, and those countries in this part of the world number 29. And they look at different experiences, and they look at various international treaties that are in existence, and they, made, they make recommendations accordingly. And the recommendations which are reflected, the amendments rather, which are in this bill, reflect the recommendations which emanate from that distinguished body of persons. This amendment bill arose from a long process which dealt primarily with the development of anti-money laundering practices since the original legislation was enacted and the discovery of weaknesses that Guyana had to correct. Should the political parties in Parliament fail to pass this bill at the appointed time, Guyana is at risk of facing serious sanctions, including being placed on an international blacklist. Some of the ramifications and consequences which can flow and sanctions which may be imposed as a result of our non-compliance can be, sir, putting us on what is referred to as an international blacklist. And when countries are placed on that list, a whole new set of international treatment is meted out to countries and international transactions entered into by nations that are put on that list are subject to stringent scrutiny and examinations. And also prohibitory sanctions are imposed which would preclude Guyana from participating in a whole host of activities to which we are accustomed. Once we, um, we are found not to be in, uh, in compliance fully, uh, or that great efforts have been made to bring us into compliance, etc., in all the areas, Guyana will be moved into a new category of country. And when you're moved into that new category of country, then you have to go through additional reviews and you could be downgraded further. The impact of that is that it will impact on the financial system of Guyana and the financial sector of Guyana. 
because this bill has to do with money laundering. So it's financial transactions to track money, where it's coming from, where it's going, who's dealing with it, etc. So this is Ghana not making the deadline will have serious consequences on the financial sector. The notoriety of a country being non-compliant to its financial obligations will have serious repercussions in terms of support from international organizations, which the country has enjoyed in the past and will greatly affect Guyana's image as an investment destination. Support for the enactment of the amending bill to the President's withholding of a cent has taken the nation, has taken Guyana into extreme perilous states and condition. At the end of the day, the opposition political parties cannot be unaware of what are the likely consequences, cannot claim that they have not been aware, and in essence, cannot shirk their responsibilities to rise above the political fray and indeed to respond as true representatives of the Guyanese people. Meanwhile, Finance Minister Dr. Ashney said that what the AFC is essentially saying is that irrespective of how important this bill is or what the consequences of its non-approval would be, they are not prepared to support it because of other political issues on which they wish to extract concessions from the government. Meanwhile, the private sector too has voiced its concerns with regards to the international sanctions and call on parliamentarians to deal with the amendments to the Act as a matter of absolute urgency.